she was absolutely sick and tired of this situation. It drained her physically, it drained her emotionally, and most of all, it drained her spiritually. You guys, this is something that is common, that happens with young apostolics, and I want to be one of the first to tell you the right way and how to handle this, okay? What do you do when someone you want to live for God doesn't want to live for God? What do you do? How do you go about operating? Do you reach them? Do you continue? Do you do everything? Do you pray? Do you fast? Do you... I mean, there's so many things that could happen, right? In regards to the things that you do personally. But I want to tell you the sad reality, okay? If you stay to the end of this video, I promise you, you're probably not going to be, <laughs> I'll just be transparent, you're probably not going to be super happy, but you will have a key that'll keep you free and keep you operating in the ministry that God called you to. Okay. Here's the thing. Let's rewind back. Uh, um, I hope she doesn't mind me telling me that. I don't think she did. We would talk about this quite a bit on live streams and stuff. My sister had a personal experience and that I got to learn from. Okay. It's good to learn from other people's experiences. And in this situation, she had went on a, on a mission trip and became friends with, you know, uh, this, uh, one, this guy who was, uh, he had just gotten in, not just gotten into church, I would say, but he was new in church and, um, all this pollen, something's in my eye. Anyway, he had, um, he gotten into church and they were, uh, you know, friends, every, all of them were right. So this big group and, and they're each personally connected because of the you know, intimate spiritual things that were going on during the, the mission trip, right? So she makes this friendship, she makes this connection, and out of the entire group, um, a couple months later, uh, he begins to go south, right? Um, and generally after, you know, a mission trip or something like that, when you, you've you gone out and you've uh, experienced certain things, what's up, buddy? <laughs> and you've um, experienced certain things, uh, you know, uh, there, there's often an attack that happens, you know, right, pretty much after the mission trip, which we can get into that, you know, later material. But anyway, uh, so he's kind of on the fence about just, just doing this church deal, going to church and continuing in it. And so as he's on the fence about it, my sister's trying to help him, right? Do the right thing. And even so much like it's in her <laughs> practically her personality type or DNA from the testing and all that stuff, practically in her DNA, um, to help people, right? Which is a great character quality to have. So she begins to help him. She begins to reach for him. Hey man, what's going on? You know, I've seen that you've been posting some stuff on social media and I heard from some of the friends that go to your church that we we're on our, our mission trip that, you know, you're, you're not there. Like what's going on? So he starts telling her his woes about life about things and his perspective on why God hasn't come through on this thing. And so he's pointing the finger at God. He's, you know, doing these, he's, his deal. And so she does what a lot of us do. And she begins to try to help him. And she says, okay, well, what about this? And don't give up here. You know, God's going to make a, make a way, you know, keep trusting and keep having faith. And his response was, okay, I'll do it. And so a few months go by and he's, supposed to have been doing good and then it comes back again that you know during his time of doing good he was really you know during that time all these other thoughts begin to populate in his head and what about this what about that right and um so she continues to help him she continues to reach for him and uh it, it turns in his mind and people will, would blame this on the devil people will blame, blame this on spirits and stuff like that when someone's baptized in jesus name filled with the holy ghost there's a certain covering that they have on their lives and for them to walk away not all the time are they devil possessed at first there people walk away from the church for many different types of reasons they get hurt by people they, they can't forgive a lot of times they don't want to line up to the word of god which is actually the case sometimes you need tough love and if you're in a certain peculiar spot where someone did do you wrong, I don't think this was the case, you, it's up to you to forgive. No devil of unforgiveness is gonna come, it, it just doesn't happen like that. Now you can walk away from the spirit of God so much so that, that you are overcome by certain spirits and devils can put thoughts in your head, but it's not the, um, we as, uh, our decision to walk away from God has everything to do with us, humans. Okay? The devil can't make us backslide. If he could, he would do it for all of us. He cannot. 
So in this scenario, in this situation, this young dude was, um, at, at, it started to come out that he wanted the things of the world. It wasn't necessarily that he was, you know, salty or mad at God. It was more so that he, you know, why do we have to do this? Why do we have to do that? And because from that starting point of wanting to follow after the things of the flesh, you have to remember that Jesus talked uh, and taught in the parable that the word of God would be broadcast on many types of different soils, you know, impacting or falling on many different people's lives, right? And some people will receive it. Some people will receive it and multiply it. Some people will receive it and it will grow in their lives and flourish. And then some people will receive it. It will grow for a split second and then it dies. That's just the way you can't change the word and you honestly can't change people, right? So he's in the position where he's starting to, starting to come out that he wants the things of the world. My sister continues to, to help him, you know, trying to help him. And he kept going down that direction so much so to where, you know, you know, with a, the, with her heart and everything, the way she was, was going, like everyone wants to help everybody. Right. Um, it, had, it came to a place where it's like, hey, listen, uh, and I remember this conversation where we all kind of talked about it. And I was like, he's, he, he doesn't want God. He doesn't want this anymore. And we, you know, we got to let people do what they're going to do. Jesus had to. He had to let Judas go do what he was going to do. He let everyone else do what they were going to do when it came to, um, you know, if they're going to follow him or not. And so we're no greater than Jesus. So just let him do what he's going to do. And so we did. And, um, a few months later, he ended up backsliding and fulfilling the lust of the flesh, <laughs> lust of the eye and the pride of life, things that he wanted. And um, it was evident he started posting all over social media and like stuff like that. He just, he backslid and he backslid hard, right? He went into it. That was my first experience with understanding that you cannot change people, okay? Um, as I would grow, go on to grow and, and uh, mature spiritually, mature in the natural, mature uh, with, you know, just the natural circumstances, you would hear it both in the secular world and you would hear it in the spiritual realm. The most successful leaders in the spiritual realm, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and then the most sec like the leaders in the secular space, particularly entrepreneurship and personal development, helping people, they would say the same thing. You can't change people. You cannot change people. Okay. If a person wants to, if a person wants to do something, they will do what they want to do. The only you can take a stick a gun it, at the back of someone's head and tell them, "Hey, give me all your money." You're not forcing them to do it. Okay. They want to do it because they want their life. Right. You're not forcing them. The, it, the people do what they want to do. And I begin to learn that lesson. Right. And then I begin to come across young people on live streams and, you know, um, YouTube comments talking about, hey, I have a friend who is not doing well and they're trying to leave the church. How do I keep them in? And I started hearing that message over and over again, like, hey, how do I keep my friend in church? How do I keep my family in church? How do I keep this? And it's like I begin to hear it. And, you know, I was thinking to myself, like, well, you could do this. You could try that prayer, fasting, those things work. But when it comes to bending the human will, nothing that we can do as human beings is going to do that. Sad reality. I know. I know. It's a sad reality. I'm, I'm just as bummed as anyone else. But the truth, which again is a sad reality, we can't change anybody. Okay. And the quicker that we realize that as young apostolics, the more, the more we'll grow in the kingdom of God. And I'll tell you why. If we're so focused on trying to save the one who's run, trying to run from God, okay, sometimes people need to run, bust their head, and be like the prodigal, come back. Okay, sometimes people are running from God and they'll never be back, right? There will be people here on, if it is possible for everyone to come to God, right? If it's possible that everyone, it's very interesting, I'm on the ground. If, if, it, if it's possible for every single soul to come to God and never leave, then we would never have backsliders and there would be no book of revelation because there would be no, there would be no reason for God to pour out any judgment because everyone would be saved if they ever came in contact with God or the truth. Right. And there's a ton of people who, you know, there's people who've never come in contact with the absolute truth, but there's also people who have, and they're backslid and they're doing things in the world 
like you know uh entertainment wise like there's at least three entertainers that i can think of at the top of my head that would spoke about their experiences in apostolic pentecostal churches where they'll speak in tongues and worship one of them was elvis presley those of you guys who don't know literally the um the guy who uh elvis reached out to though a week before he died came to our church and was talking about you don't have, you're not promised tomorrow elvis was trying to get me that the preacher to come back to 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 talk with him so that he can get right with god because he felt you know his time was coming but the time it just came right this is hard reality that um i would say more so is old school apostolic okay not a lot of people talk about that we want like fluffy christianity that like oh everyone's gonna be saved and but that's not the truth okay the reality is, is that if you're not baptized in Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost, you're not going to make it to heaven. You're not in covenant with Jesus, right? And then you say, well, what about all the Christians who, yeah, that's got to figure them out, okay? We have the word, we have the truth, we understand. And so, because of that, kind of got off there a little bit, um, we don't have time, okay? We're just not, we're not promised time. Time, excuse me. So, what do you do with someone who does not want to live for God? After you try to pull their teeth you try to pull them and you know that the route that they're going, you can see the destruction ahead. You know, kind of like this little pathway I'm walking down. You can see it ahead. They may be like over here where all they see is the wall. They may be behind the wall. They're like hiding over there or they can't see nothing, but you can see all the way down there. And you're like, dude, you're going, you're, you're going nowhere. Kind of like how I am right now, just walking. I'm gonna make a U-turn. <laughs> I'll repent. No, she's like, yeah. Turn around, complete 180. But what do you do with those people, okay? after you prayed for them after you've you know try to get them to pray for themselves after you try to get their family members to pray for them after you try to keep them uh, uh holy ghost filled and fasting after you try to uh you know do all the youth events that you can all the youth functions all the hangouts you can have a hangout every single day a prayer meeting right after the hangout every single day you guys can fast every single day so your belly button scratching your, your spine, right? You could do all that, but if a person does not want to live for God, they will not live for God. It's not that they they can somewhat finagle their way into living for God. They will not. They will not live for God if they don't want to live for God. Okay. So what can you do about it? God didn't force Adam and Eve not to sin. They willed it. They did it themselves. You're not greater than God. No, none of us should think think so okay and we can say oh i know i'm not greater than god but when you try to hold someone into the church when they're trying to get away okay <laughs> it's not gonna work okay we're not greater than god another thing is god doesn't force every single human being on planet earth to be saved okay right at this moment right at this split second okay not everyone's gonna be saved so what do we do? We have the law, we have the prophets. That man who was burning in hell told and asked Father Abraham, hey, let, let, let me go up there. And just, and if I come back from the dead, he said, it doesn't work that way. And plus they have the law and the prophets. They have the word of God, they have the preachers. If they won't hear the preachers, they're not gonna hear you, right? They're, well, he said this, check this out. They're not gonna hear someone who came back from the dead. They didn't hear Jesus who came back from the dead, which proved Abraham's father, Abraham's point. They're not gonna hear someone if they came back from the dead. Now, I know this video is kind of running long, so let's try to let's try to land this thing, right? Okay. So first you have to realize you can't change people. Okay, people have to want to live for God. And the problem is, is that if you continue to, to invest your energy into trying to change people who don't want to change, you're gonna miss those who actually need you. Okay, there's someone in the world who needs that, that value, that virtue that you're giving the person who doesn't want to live for God. Okay, there's someone out there who wants it, who needs it. And you're distracted with this person who you, God, God can't even get them. God himself cannot get him, whoever it is, them to live for him. He can't even do it. So you're trying to do something that's impossible, right? I guess you can see it down there. Looks pretty, pretty over there. Um, anyway, um, and uh, when there's someone who who is like on the verge 
of committing suicide or on the verge of being saved and you just need to be over there to 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 get them from where they're at into truth right there's that person who's out there and you're not reaching them why because you're you're trying to get this numb nut who doesn't want to live for god to live for god so and another thing is you're frustrating yourself okay listen we have we have energy and our human being our physical body is very closely tied to our spirit body spiritual man right our, our spirit being okay they're not they're not separate that's why our spirit being and our it's like together okay god created the the human body so what happens is when you drain yourself physically you're more susceptible to spiritual attack that's just a reality i don't have time to go into it in depth right but when you drain yourself okay you are in a position where you can get frustrated you can start asking god all these questions when you're trying to pull someone back into church and they don't want to all of a sudden like all of a sudden you'll start thinking to yourself like you, you would literally go down the path of thinking is this thing real if god wants everyone to be saved and this person i'm trying to get them in, into salvation I'm trying to get them saved right and they're fighting it you'll begin to lose the energy and then you begin to question the things that you don't need to question listen demas forsook paul okay let them forsake you let them let them go i know it sounds super horrible let them go because you're you're suffocating your yourself your spiritual being you're suffocating your ministry because you're not going out and ministering to other people who really need the truth right and you're letting souls slip through the balance because of the fact that you're not going out there and reaching other people okay jesus told them this the 70 that he sent out he told them go in pairs two by two right you go out there he said and if this if people receive you they'll receive the blessing of a prophet and if they forsake you shake off the dust of that city off your feet as a curse against that city right as, excuse me a testimony against that city what does that mean there will be cities there will be people there will be houses there will be nations who reject god the purpose of the the us going out there and preaching isn't to save the entire world we think that because we just think that i don't know why we think that our purpose is to go out there as a witness to the world we're witnessing if they believe good they are saved if they don't then they'll reap the judgment that comes okay so stop and trying to pull people in that don't want to come in you'll you'll exhaust yourself and you'll stifle stifle and suffocate your ministry because you're not reaching those who want to be reached okay don't mess with those people don't that's why we don't debate we're not supposed to be arguing with people because people who rope us into debates they're taking our time from reaching other people now some people can be reached during a, a debate yes that's true right now this is a good time for me to turn around yeah that can happen okay but um it's uh it, it's not likely okay let me just the wind that's why i'm walking this way again okay and i have a long walk home <laughs> but um st stop like i hate to say it like this but stop okay i remember and this is kind of where i'll close there's a uh a man of God we all know, we all highly respect. If I mention his name, you guys will know exactly who I'm talking about. I heard in a message from him, um, he said this, he said, uh, you know, at the latter, in his later years, living for God, um, forget how everything went verbatim, but he was in his home repenting for, you know, asking God to forgive him for all the people that he was trying to get to live for God that did not want to live for God. You waste so much time doing that. And again, you 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 lose so many people who want this thing. Right? By not uh, or by trying to force people to live for God. So, don't do that. Okay? If they're if they want to backslide, I'm not saying just because someone starts, you know, getting off, you don't go reach for them. I'm talking about if you if, if they're pulling against you. They're trying to get out of this thing. Like, I don't want this thing. I don't want this thing. No matter what you do, no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you fast, you can go on a 40 day fast for that one individual soul. Nine times out of 10, it's not gonna work, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, leave room for possibility because there have been times where spiritual strongholds are broken and stuff like that. I do understand that, okay? But I'm saying for in general, 
it's not the best practice to continue to try to pull someone who doesn't want this thing. If Demas forsook Paul, if <laughs> the Jews forsook Jesus, who are we, right? So anyway, that's all I got. <laughs> um, actually, this came from uh, you know, a conversation that, uh, that sparked up and I was like, hmm, no. Uh, I see where your, your pastor's right. I'm not saying that I had to validate anything. I'm just, you know, someone was asking. They're telling me what their pastor's saying. Like, That's the truth. Pastor's right. He's wise. <laughs> Listen to him. So, um, yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. Like I said, I got a long walk home. Um, don't try to get people to live for God who don't want to live for God. Okay. If they really, really just don't want it, you can't change them. Now, you can't pray. You can't fast. Okay. And this is, you can't pray. You can't fast. Okay. And for this, like what I'm talking about, when I'm saying they're they're trying to get away from God, you already did the prayer and fasting book, okay? Exhaust everything you can reaching for people, but once they have like officially said, no, I don't want this, what can you do? So comment below if this makes sense. If it doesn't, I know there's, there's special situations. I know there's times where you don't want, you know, if you're in that situation, you wouldn't want someone to give up on you. I understand that you know, um, completely. But I, all, I, I also know young people have wasted so much time and uh, people in general, uh, ministers who've expressed that they've wasted a lot of time with people who just didn't want to live for God. What can you do? So um, yeah, this is my quick message to y'all. Okay, love you guys. Um, think about that. I don't want to go off in the promotion of like maturity, apathy theory stuff. Um, I kind of just more so just think about that, okay? Run through that and uh, we'll see what uh, what happens. Talk to your spiritual authority. Talk to your parents or pastor if you're in that situation and tell them, hey, I saw this video from Yappa. I think I understand what he's saying. Show me, show me the video if you want to. Um, maybe we'll provide some guidance. So, sorry about that, guys. Got a phone call. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the end of the video. Uh, talk to your spiritual authority. See what they have to say. Um, and uh, yeah, hope this helps. Um, just let this go down in YouTube's record or if, they, if you're watching this on Facebook, that this understanding was submitted out there because uh, this is definitely something I know that um, some people that are in this situation need to hear. Anyway, okay. Love you guys. God bless. In Jesus' name.